Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. Riot has been so generous as to update us with seven beginner decks for new players to hop into the game and start playing different strategies. I've covered quite a few decks already, so make sure to check out my recent videos. But for now, here's even more stuff to try. Whether you're a brand new player, a returning player, or someone who's a little tight on resources, then this video is for you. I'm going to break down how to unlock the new beginner decks and what some modified versions will look like so that you have a fine list to work towards. As per usual, each deck code will be in the description below along with the Mobilytics links. Before I get into the video, if you're new, please consider hitting the subscribe button to stay up to date with my content. I also stream on Twitch often, so check me out over there if you're looking for live gameplay, and also consider visiting my Patreon if I've helped you at all during your lore journey. With that, I hope you enjoy this video. Here's a quick tutorial on how to import codes for new players. For PC users, click on the description box of this video and scroll down to the deck code. Highlight the code and press Ctrl C or right click copy, either one works. Then open your lore client and in the collection menu, hit import deck and it will pull it up for you. For mobile users, click on the Mobilytics link provided under the codes and scroll until you see the download icon. Click on it and then hit the copy deck code button. Open your lore app, go to the collection menu and tap on import code to insert it into your collection. So you actually have to unlock these decks yourselves for now. This will change after June 29th, so if you're watching this video afterwards, this doesn't apply to you and you'll have the decks automatically. But for now, what you have to do is go to the store menu and check the featured section. A list of the decks will appear for the cost of zero coins. Make sure to grab them and they'll automatically be put into your collection. So starting us off, we have the last beginner deck that is purchasable from the shop, and that is Seers and Soldiers. This is the last one that I haven't covered yet. The other two decks in this video will be focusing on champions that we already own, but kind of like doing some mixing and matching. That way we can come up with some more strategies. So getting into Seers and Soldiers specifically, it is a mid-range Demacia beatdown deck, meaning it wants to set up a couple units, really focus on them, buff them up, and use them to beat over the board, and eventually win out over the opponent. It has a plethora of very valuable units and really strong combat tricks, which are buff spells that can be used during combat to win out, and even some strike spells to keep the opponent's strategies down. So starting us off, we have Fleet Feather Tracker, 1 mana 2-1. When you summon another ally, grant me Challenger. So after you play Tracker on one, you go into the next turn, get something else down. Well, now Tracker can grab things from the opponent's board. Really good into early game units that you want to trade over, like champions like Teemo and other really pesky early game cards that the opponent wants to develop. Tracker can just get rid of those for us. Next, we have Triple Omenhawk, 1 mana 1-1. One, one. When I'm summoned, grant the top two allies in your deck plus one plus one. Now, this is really important because this deck, more so than most of the others that I've covered, really, really cares about its stats. So if we can grant the top two allies plus one plus one, that's actually really good for us depending on what it hits. If it hits our champions and we're able to develop them and play around them and keep them nice and safe, then Omenhawk gives us insane amounts of value. So really, really strong one drop. Triple form up. Of course, we are in Demacia, so we want to use the best Demacia combat trick. Two mana, burst speed, plus two, plus two. Very good for combat. Aggressively, defensively, can use it in conjunction with strike spells, can use it in conjunction with Fleet Feather Tracker's Challenger. Really good stuff overall. Next, we have Inner Beast, another combat trick. Two mana, burst speed, give an ally 1 1 this round and create a stance swap in hand. So Stance Swap is the other half of the deck that we're going to focus on. So aside from Demacia, we are also Freljord 2nd Region. Freljord is offering us Udir and also all of the Stance Swapping. So basically what this is, is a 3 mana slow speed spell that comes to your hand. It looks like this. It says grant a stance to an ally. All you have to do is spend 3 mana, target an ally, and then you get to pick one of the stances. The first stance is Wild Claw. Grant an ally, plus 2, plus 0, and Overwhelm. You want to put this on a unit that's already super powerful and can use it as a win con to transition its big attack stat into a lethal. Next, we have Boar Stance. Grant an ally, plus 0, plus 2, and Regeneration. Regen is a keyword that says the ally heals at the end of each round, so any damage that's sticking to the ally, it will now heal up and be really, really annoying. You want to use this on units that are a reoccurring threat, like Petrocyte Broadwing, which we'll talk about, and just use it to keep your units nice and healthy. Next, we have Bear Stance, grant an ally plus two plus two. You'd pretty much want to put this on something that already has Overwhelm. Honestly, Bear Stance is the one that comes up the least often because it's just raw stats, no keywords. 
And finally, we have Ram Stance. Pick an ally, deal one to everything else. This includes your Nexus, this includes your allies. Okay, so be a bit careful. You want to use Ram Stance when it's more valuable to remove the enemy units than it is to damage your own. As long as it's okay to do so, then you can use Ram. It's really good into aggro matchups where opponents have a bunch of 1 HP units like spiders and stuff like that, and you can just clean them up. Next we have Petrosite Broadwing, 2 mana 0, 3, formidable. This unit strikes with its HP, so it's basically a 3 damage attacker. However, when it takes damage, it will then deal damage with its remaining health. So if it goes down to 1, it will deal 1, right? So this is why we want to put 0, 2, and regen on it with one of our stances. So it will be a 5 HP unit, striking for 5 damage, and also healing at the end of the turn, making it a reoccurring 5 damage threat, which is absolutely insane. It is one of the strongest combos in the entire deck. Bonus side note, it also has the Fleet Feather Tracker condition of if you summon another ally, grant it Challenger, so you want to make sure you do that, play an ally after the Broadwing, then you'll be able to start grabbing the opponent's units. Next we have Single Combat, which is a Demacia Classic, 2 mana fast speed spell, an ally and an enemy strike each other. This is really good if you have a big unit and the opponent has a small unit that's just like really annoying, again, like Teemo and other elusive strategies, you can just make sure to kill them off with your Single Combat. You also gain benefits from like Udyr and Garen striking because Garen can level and Udyr can get stance swaps and make them free if you use single on them. So yeah, our champions are really good single combat targets and you love to see that. Next we have triple Vulpine Wander, 2 mana 2-2. Two, two. When I'm summoned, create a stance swap in hand. These are the spells that we went over earlier. Blocking Badger Bear, 3 mana 4-4. Four, four. I can block units with Elusive, so this is just permanently able to block Elusive strategies. Really good unit. It's also a 3 mana 4-4. Four, four. Can we talk about that? Those are some big stats. Really good on offense and on defense. Garen, our first champion, innately has regen, so that's really nice. We can stance up Garen, and we don't have to put regen on him because he already has it. We can give him the Overwhelm, and he'll be a really good reoccurring threat for us. When I'm summoned, give other allies plus one plus one this round. So if you have like three dudes, that's nice. Garen's going to give you plus three plus three with the stats for the round. Really good at pushing or also deterring the opponent's attack if you play him on defense turn. Very good overall. Level up, I've struck twice. So after Garen has struck twice, he then gains the effect to rally every round start, meaning you gain the attack token. So if you were to go into your defense turn, he actually gets to rally and you get an attack that turn, which pressures the opponent to have to deal with it. So yeah, Garen's really, really strong. So if you have Overwhelm on him or one of your other units, you get to attack. Then you go into defense turn, you get to attack again um, with those big units, and then you get to go into attack turn and attack again. And it's just kind of hard for the opponent to deal with if they're already falling behind on the board. So that's kind of where this deck edges out and how it wants to play. Extra copies of Garen become Garen's Judgment, which is a big blowout card. If you resolve it, really good. You get to basically win the game. If it gets interacted with and fizzles, then it's really bad. You might lose the game. So yeah, it's like a coin flip card. And here we have Screeching Dragon. 5 mana, 4, 5, Challenger. So really good keyword, especially if we put Regen on him. He can keep swinging and keep being a Challenger unit. Very nice. And also fury because he is a dragon when i kill a unit grant me one one permanently so that's really good screeching dragon can keep growing and keep being a very strong threat that the opponent has to answer so that's kind of one of the cool things that this deck can do if the opponent is playing like shadow owls control they only have so many vengeances right like three they have to vengeance garen they have to vengeance screeching and they have to vengeance udir if you're playing them all back to back to back meaning it's really hard for the opponent to keep coming up with answers for these big stats because little removal spells are not going to do it moving on to our other champion udir 5 mana 5-4, when I'm summoned or strike, create a stance swap in hand, just like before, these are the stance swaps. However, if you already have one, reduce its cost to zero, so now you can start playing the stance swaps for free, and that's really good because you can start stacking them on top of each other, keep buffing your one and two dudes, and just basically win the game with that. He levels up if you play three stance swaps over the course of the game, so that's pretty easy, and he's going to be very big. On level up form, I have plus one plus one for each stance you've played this game. So he's going to go up to like eight, nine attack. You uh, buff him with a stance. He's also going to go up to like 11 or 12 with overwhelm. So yeah, he's just going to be punching really hard. Next, we have Hyara Allseer, 6 mana 5 5. When I'm summoned, create a stance swap in hand, and the first stance swap you play each round costs zero automatically. So now we can start like cycling the stances, right? If we have Udyr out, we have Allseer out, we can play one for free, we can make another one, Udyr can strike, make that one free. Next turn, Allseer will make the next one free, and you just keep, keep going with these stance swaps and just keep pushing stats onto our dudes. 
and that makes it really good in the mid and late game. Speaking of which, we have two Shaman's Call, six mana burst speed, create two fleeting zero cost stance swaps in hand. So yeah, we're just continuing to do the Shaman's Call stance swap shenanigans. And to round it out, we have two Judgment because the deck came with it. It's a pretty okay epic. Might as well run it for the flavor. So if you have a very big Judgment swing, it's really good. Uh, if it gets interacted with and your opponent like vengeances you, then that's kind of sad. But honestly, pretty strong card and it can win a lot of games that the opponent is not ready for. Um, if you resolve the judgment. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. I'll be giving context of why I'm playing certain cards and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. And for the example game, we're going to be fighting another Demacia Freljord strategy and that is Garen and Lissandra. Hopefully we have a stronger mid game push. Lissandra is not super good, so hopefully we can beat over her. And wow, our hand is actually pretty decent. We have Omenhawk on turn one. We can play Fleet Feather Tracker. We have some buffs. Single combat is always good. So I'm just going to full keep. We have an early game and we have some early um, combat tricks. So let's go ahead and lead with Omenhawk, I believe. I think getting the buffs out as soon as possible will be very good. Then we can develop our Fleet Feather Tracker on defense turn and then just play something else by attack turn three to uh, give him the challenger. Broadwing, see? Holy, this is already better. That's a four damage unit right here. Big Broadwing. An Whoa! Double Broadwing, yo! That's looking kind of clean. Wild Mysticism, sure thing. So they're playing Ramp. They want to make sure they get mana faster than I do. I feel like this is a pretty interesting strategy. Go ahead and swing into that. Stay in control of the board. We are pushing seven. One here, four here, two here. Blocking Badger Bear is super clean. Combat Cook, yeah. That's a good card. A good fight, the spice of life. Garlic works in a pitch. A five, four. Um, I think we can play the blocking Badger Bear. The problem is they have Fearsome, which means we cannot block with any of our current units. So if we play Badger Bear, we can attempt the block. If they swing, then that means they have like a form up or something to beat over my Badger Bear. But they did not swing. Screeching. I think I want to lead the turn just open attacking. Grab this. We can swing with everything. We can honestly threaten the lethal, but I think they'll probably um, try something here. Like some frostbiting. They could be on harsh winds and stuff like that. So since I'm pretty satisfied with the attack, I'm just going to start. Yeah, here's the flash freeze. Makes sense, that's it. Yep. They, what's funny is they can't flash freeze my Petrocyte Broadwing because again, it has formidable. It strikes with its HP. Frostbite only hits attack stat, so <laughs> that is kind of funny. We get to bypass that. Um, yeah, let's send it, looks good. Yep. If we did like form up to try to beat over it, they get another action to play more stuff. Ooh. Garen. Uh, I'm down to play Screeching. If they weapon the Garen, he's actually going to go up to 7 health. Holy. Hey, don't do it. Don't put that weapon on. Okay, they put the weapon on the Garen. They did do that. I told you not to, but you did it anyways. Hmm. I don't like that. That is a big, big Garen. All right. Do what is right. I mean, we could definitely try doing an inner beast and then a form up. Because it floats us perfect mana. We still have another inner beast. We have single combat. We have a lot of ways to make this go our way. Ideally, they're just not on another big, you know, freeze, which they are. All right. Three sisters flash freeze. So they get to kill my blocking badger bear. Let's go ahead and stand swap, give this regen. And then we can open attack and threaten lethal. So here's how we can use our damage in a really interesting way. So we are threatening 10, 11 damage on lethal here. So here's 6 damage, 4, that's 10. One more puts us to 11. And we grab Garen over here. 
If they judgment, uh, we can actually inner beast and single and kill the Garen, so we're not even in a bad spot if it comes to that. Like, our Broadwing just being this high of HP is so good for us. It's kind of hard for them to be on an out now. Okay, another Frostbite. They are still dying exact lethal before my buff. Three sisters. Is that looking like a flash freeze on the Omen Hawk? That is hilarious! <laughs> Alright, so we do have exact lethal. Thank god for inner beast being in our hand. We can just buff up our dragon. And pressure as such. GG. Got him with the big beatdown. Moving on to the next deck. Since I've now covered all the decks that are offered as is in the shop, now I'm messing with some champions, you know, doing some mixing and matching, and showing you guys some alternative options for the champions that you have. This one is Garen Kale. So we take Garen from the last deck that I just showcased, take Kale from the Zed Kale deck, also craft a couple Jarvan and you're good to go with this one. You just need to get the commons and rares primarily, right? And fill out the deck and this is the best beginner friendly deck. If you just want the most powerful beginner deck, you just want to climb right away, this is the one to do it. This is Elites. So the main strategy of Elites is a lot like the last one, it is a Demacia mid-range beatdown style, however, we are playing with Synergy with this deck. Our Synergy is the Elite tag, right? So all these cards that have Elite, we are playing stuff like that. Because we have Battlesmith, which buffs Elites, and then other cards that interact with Elites, like this one, um, gets buffed. And we also have Vanguard Squire who gets cheaper as we play Elites. So yeah, we're going to be going a bit more wide and playing for really, really big swings. So to do that, we have Scythria, who is a 1-mana 2-2 two, two Elite. Very nice. Trusty Ramhound, 1-mana one 1-1. One, one. The first time you summon an Elite, grant me 2-2 two, two permanently, so he will be a 1-mana 3-3. Three, three. Very good stats. Battlesmith, 2-mana two 2-2. Two, two. When you summon an Elite, grant it 1-1 one, one permanently. That's really good. So we put Battlesmith on the board on turn 2, and then turn 3 and 4, we just start spamming Elites, and we come up with a lot of big stats. Form up, just like the last deck, we want to have the premier combat trick, really good stats, really good against removal. That way we have a form of protection, right? Good HP gain. Single combat, again, same reason as the last list. We want to be using this to strike, get our Garen level off with that, and also just use our premium units at big stats and kill really annoying units that we don't have access to, like elusives. Then we have Vanguard Defender, 2 mana 2-2 two, two tough elite. Blocking Badger Bear, again 3 mana 4-4, four, four. I can block Elusive, however, something that we couldn't abuse in the last deck, we can with this one, Elite Tag. So now this can be a 3 mana 5-5 five, five on summon after you develop the Battlesmith. So yeah, this gets kind of out of control, a 3 mana 5-5, five, five, that's so big! Really really scary card. 3 mana 3-3, three, three, Vanguard Sergeant, when I'm summoned create a 4 Demacia in hand, this is a big finisher spell. For Demacia, give all allies plus three plus three this round. So if you set up four or five dudes, for Demacia just basically comes out and closes the game out. Triple Vanguard Squire, three mana, three, three. When you summon an elite, reduce my cost by one. So yeah, we can just play this for free. If we develop a couple elites in the early game, gets all the buffs, good stuff. Silver Wing Vanguard, four mana, two, one. Challenger, play, summon an exact copy of me. So you get to summon two, two ones with Challenger. If it's buffed by Battlesmith, then you summon two three twos, right? And that's really insane. We can also set this up on defense four and then Garen on attack five, and that feels really good. Next, we have an epic. So you do have to shill out two epic wild cards to craft this guy. This is a four minute three two swift wing flight challenger play. Create one of these of your choice. So you get a free tracker, a free assault, or a free vanguard into your hand, and then you can play them later. Again, since we're playing elites, we got the elite synergy with the silver wing vanguard, so that's a good one. Also, on attack, give other challenging allies 1-1 one, one this round. So any of your vanguards that come out, really nice. We just get the extra plus one plus one, can use that to beat over more things. Super good in general. Next we have Garen, which I mentioned before, does the same stuff, is elite tag, so he can come down as a 5 mana 6-6, uh, six, six. that's really good, then he can level, and then round start rally, really strong if we develop him and actually level him, however, his on summon effect is a lot more relevant in this deck because we are going wide, meaning we're playing a lot of units and getting a bunch of stuff on the board, so Garen hits more things, so he's a bit more valuable in this deck. Next we have 2 Kale, coming in from the Kale Z deck. I have plus one plus zero for each time an ally attacked with increased power. So we are going to be raising our power a lot with our buffs 
and also with like our you know combat tricks so that's really good if we pre-commit or if we use something you know as a response to removal like our form up and then we get to attack that will be an enhanced stat for kale and then she comes down even stronger and she also pushes extra damage on our units kind of in the same way that garen does so she's really good then she can level and be an overwhelm win con for us if you uh, get into the mid late game so that's super solid one Jarvan, pretty easy to craft, 6 mana, 6, 4, barrier. When you attack, pay my cost to summon me, challenging the strongest enemy. So it sounds a bit confusing, but it's really not. Let's say you have um, Garen, that's your defense turn 5 play. Then you go into turn 6, you have 6 mana, you open attack, so Garen's going to swing, and then Jarvan will come out of hand and immediately start attacking the strongest enemy unit that's on the board. That's really good. It takes your 6 mana for the turn, so you can only play spell mana if you've banked spell mana. But yeah, Jarvan's going to come down and try to kill something, and he has barriers, so he'll live the strike unless the opponent has removal for him. He levels up if allies have survived three strikes from enemy blockers over the course of the game then basically this is a lot of text for saying like he does the same thing but also on round start he creates a fleeting cataclysm which is a very strong card and it's also jarvin's champion spell so we're going to be using that and seeing that a lot an ally starts a free attack challenging an enemy so pretty good get to just have like a nice attack take out you know one of your opponent's important units however if jarvin is doing the cataclysm Right? He will also gain barrier every time you resolve it on him, so he's really good. Just use him as the target for the Cataclysm and you'll be good to go. Next we have Zolani, which I believe we get one of for free from the Zed Kale deck, so that's really nice. Just plop it in here. I have 2-2 two, two for each ally that died with its power increased. Again, we're increasing our power quite a bit, especially like the Battlesmith buffs being spread. So sometimes we can just use this as like a big finisher. It might be like an 8-8 overwhelm. Sometimes it's like 10. Sometimes you can get it empowered 16. It's not super likely, but if you do, it creates like a bunch of these and they're all going to be 16 attack overwhelm and that's a really big win con. But yeah, we're just going to use this as a uh, overwhelm finisher. And rounding us out, we have two champion strength, which is like the strongest Demacia card. It is the best epic that this deck has access to, so definitely craft this right away. Nine mana slow speed spell. Give allies 4-4 four, four this round. If you have the attack token, give them scout. Meaning, if you attack with all of your scouts, you get to attack again for free right after. So you'll be attacking with a bunch of things that have plus 4, plus 4, and then attacking again, which basically just closes out the game. The opponent has to come up with so much to defend from champion strength. The main thing they can do is like ruination, like just big AOE removal. If they don't and they try to block it, they will get outstatted and you will come out on top. Very, very good card. And that's it for this deck rundown. I cannot recommend this deck enough if you're a new player. Please trust me, try it. You'll get some really explosive games and you'll just absolutely turbo climb. And with that, that's it for the rundown. Now here's a live commentary game. For the example game, we're going to be fighting Garen Vane Jarvan. It's a lot like Vayne Aatrox, but uh, a bit different. All right, so we have Trusty Ramhound on one. That's good. Champion Strength can actually come up later. We only run it at two, so it could be worth keeping. Uh, I think we should fight for the board a bit more. So let's go ahead and mulligan away all of these. Keep our Trusty Ramhound and try to get our Battlesmith. Try to get our other early game elites. That way our Ramhound is big and then we just start popping off. Nice. Perfect. Ramhound. Nice. Perfect. All right. So he's living. Then I'm going to open attack because I don't want to play Battlesmith and then miss out on some damage. Also, Battlesmith might just get Mystic Shotted. So let's go ahead and get the open because there's some world where they just Mystic Shot the Ramhound instead. Ace Corn. Uh, all right, let's put Battlesmith. Hopefully no Mystic from PNZ. Nice. Because I would love for this Battlesmith to live a few turns and we just get like infinite value. Play a card, play Vayne. And then I play blocking Badger Bear and win because I can block the elusive. Yes, they did what I said. They played Vayne. Okay, so blocking Badger Bear. And then we win the game. Just like that. Turn three lethal. Look at that. Battlesmith, Ramhound, Badger Bear. Called it. Now I'm not going to leave you with that elite game. So here's another one. But did you see how absolutely broken that opener is? Ramhound, Battlesmith. Blocking Badger Bear, GG. We basically have that again with Ramhound, Battlesmith, Sergeant. So we're going to keep the hand and just play it out. One, two, three. Oh, a double Battlesmith. I actually don't think that's that great. That doesn't come up too often. One Battlesmith is usually good enough. We don't gotta do two. Ramhound. Maybe we do though. Maybe we uh pull it off. Forsaken Bakai. Yep. 
So they are playing Sun Disk with all three corrupted champions. They have the corrupted card back. Love it. That's also my favorite way to play the deck. So that's super cool to see. Obviously, we don't want to attack and sack our dude into Bakai. That would be bad. So let's just play out our Battlesmith and then go into Sergeant. Unless we top deck Scythria again, then we could actually play out Defender plus Scythria on turn three. The finest Demacian steel. We're just going to take four to face, yeah. We don't really mind. We can take four and then let's see what we top deck here. Hail. Yeah, so let's just go ahead and do either Sergeant or Defender. I'm liking both. They both basically do the same thing. I like Sergeant a bit more though because then our turn four can be second Battlesmith into Defender. And that's really clean with our hands. So we'll play this on three and then these on four, right? The math checks out. Discipline and steel. So we'll just play like this. We have the 3-3, three, 2-2, three, two, two, four, 4 Really strong board. From to Kalamanda, we stand a 3-4. Alright. That means our only positive trade is our Sergeant. So that's all we're going to send. Yep. We get to come out a little bit ahead. Taking a trade here. They all got one level up point since I attacked with an enhanced unit. That's nice. Rockhopper. That's really cringe. No, I wanted to play Battlesmith number two first. Defender's going to go up to a three. Okay, that's fine. I'll just play the Defender. So what happened was they played Roiling Sands. When an enemy is summoned, destroy me and grant it vulnerable, meaning they get to grab and they could grab my Battlesmith, which is really lame. So let's just play out the Defender. Because nothing they currently have kills my Defender, so that's fine. I'll just play the Battlesmith after. Not what I wanted to do, but it'll work, I guess. Squire. Oh, let's just play Kale. It is for the divine to dispense justice. Big Kale. She just gave everything plus one attack. Castigate. Okay. Holy moly. Just absolutely wiped my board. Well, we're going to have to get that back somehow. However, look at that. Wait, Castigate just made my Zolani huge. <laughs> That's why she's uh, clutch. Jarvin, hello. I'm kind of down to just play you, but I'm also down to play these and then go into Zolani. Yeah, I don't really want to play Jarvin, I don't think. Play out the Sergeant. And then Cheap Squire, and then we can play Zolani. <laughs> that Castigate may have actually made me come out on top. That's a really big unit. Play it out. I see lies in words and truth in blood. Yeah, so how are you going to deal with a 12-12 over one, by the way? I'm just curious. I don't know how you plan on dealing with it, but... Uh, maybe you castigate again? If you castigate again, I'll be very mad, so don't do that again. Renick Denture. 12-12-6-5. I don't really have to send it with the 3-3s. Three they don't really do a whole lot for me. I'll just keep them on board for four Demacia later. Yep. Hi. Because it's not like the Renekton can do anything unless they're on another Renekton. That way they can give him Challenger. Because they castigated away my only thing that was vulnerable, so Renekton doesn't even get to attack whatever he wants. Hmm, Ambassador. Okay, that may haps be Renekton, and then he's going to kill my Kale, which is super cringe, and I don't like that. don't really have a choice in the matter, though. Let's just go ahead and play the Defender out. If I was on Champion Strength, I would just play that here, because I would have had enough mana. Glory's Call. That means they're definitely on second Renekton. Glory's Call gets cheaper the more Ascended Allies they play. They're also baiting a pass. I'm down. What? We always take that pass hello. Because now we open attack. See? Jarvin comes out of hand. Grabs the Renekton. And then we're pushing lethal. And that's how you beat him down. Even through big castigate. Let's go Zolani and Kale. Clutch. That's why they're in elites. And the final deck I have for you is Nasus Senna Control. I mainly picked this deck because I showcased Nasus and Callista together in a previous video. However, that was actually more of an aggressive style deck using Fearsome, you know, as a very aggressive keyword, and just trying to beat down the opponent. 
However, if you want to play Nasus in a more controlled environment, which is kind of his intended design, then I got you with this list. I took Nasus from the Nasus Callista. I also took Senna from the Darkness deck, slapped them together, put in some more removal, and now we're playing a very slow control deck. It does have a lot of the same early game with like the Bakai Reaper and the Burgeoning Sentinel. So here's a one mana, one, two fearsome. When you slay a unit, grant me one zero. This can be our own units. If we're slaying with like hate spike or glimpse, it can also be whenever you're slaying opponents. So if we use Quietus or Soul Harvest, any removal on the opponent's units, Bakai Reaper sees that he will be gaining stats. Love that. We can also slay during combat. So lots and lots of ways to uh, buff this Bakai Reaper. Burgeoning Sentinel, 1 mana, 1, 2 Fearsome. The first time you kill a unit with a spell, grant me 2, 1. This can be ally units or enemy units. Very good. Very consistent buff. 2 Quietus, kill a unit with total power and health of 4 or less, or destroy units equipment. So we can kill like a 2, 2, a 3, 1, a 1, 3. Basically, if the stats equal 4, we can kill it, or we can destroy an equipment, which is obviously really good to have that flexibility for 1 mana. Triple Ceaseless Sentry, 2 mana, 2, 1, last breath, draw 1, helps us cycle through the deck, gives us a hate spike target, gives us glimpse beyond target, a really, really good overall, super solid draw card. Triple Glimpse Beyond, speaking of which, 2 mana, fast speed spell, kill an ally to draw 2, use this reactively if the opponent is using removal, we use Glimpse Beyond, it resolves first, turns our unit that was going to die anyways into more resources. Double Hate Spike, kill an ally to deal 3 to a unit and summon a random husk. The husk is a 0 1 that has a keyword. If we play an ally later, it kills the husk, absorbs it, giving it the keyword and also the plus 1 health. So that's really nice. But yeah, we have lots of targets for the Hate Spike. Having 3 damage removal is super good, so we can hit a bunch of 3 HP targets. Love that. Triple Soul Harvest, 2 mana slow speed spell, kill a follower with 3 or less power, or spend 1 more mana to kill a champion with 3 or less power. Really, really good. A lot of fantastic targets, both followers and champions. We can hit so many things with this. Triple Buru Sentinel, 3 mana 3 3 fearsome. The first time you kill a unit with a spell, grant me plus 2 plus 1. So just like our other Sentinel, nice little buff. Double Quicksand, 3 mana, give an enemy minus 4, or 2 enemies minus 1. So you get to pick. Disable their positive keywords this round, so this is really good against Quick Attack, and against Elusive, and against Fury, and against Overwhelm, and pretty much anything. So Quicksand is a super flexible combat trick, can use it defensively, honestly you can use it aggressively as well to lower things below Fearsome blocking range, since we are playing a lot of Fearsome units, however that's more of like an advanced strategy, but keep it in mind, Quicksand, really really good card. Next we have Double Undying, 3 mana 2 2 can't block, last breath, revive me, next round start, and grant me 1 1 for each time I've died. So this is a reoccurring annoyance for the opponent, this is our fantastic hate spike target, we can also just attack with it relentlessly, whittle down the opponent, make it easy to kill them later. Double Rite of Negation, this is Sharima Deny, we can use this to stop big spells that the opponent is trying to resolve, we can target our own undying with this right so we can kill an ally and gain the benefit while also slaying an ally so yeah there's like a bunch of synergy however if we don't think that's going to resolve and we can't hit our unit we can always just destroy a mana gem to make sure that the opponent spell does not resolve double grasp of the undying five mana fast speed spell drain three from any unit so it deals three to something but it also heals your nexus this makes this card very very strong into burn aggro play styles Basically, if you resolve Grasp and you're kind of ahead on the board, it will be very hard for aggro to close out the game against you. Next we have Triple Senna, 5 mana 4-4 four, four quick attack. When I'm summoned or attack, create a darkness so you can get through multiple darknesses, that's super nice. Darkness is a slow speed spell, deal 2 to an enemy, however, Senna also accelerates it to fast speed so you can start using it during combat. She levels up if I've seen you kill 3 units with spells or an allied Lucian dies. We're not playing Lucian, so it'll just be the first condition. I've seen you kill 3 units with spells. That should be pretty easy. We're going to be killing units with spells quite often, our own and the opponent's. And then she accelerates your kill spells to fast speed, and they also cost 1 less. That is really good. So yeah, Senna is just going to be like a value town engine. We're going to be using our spells cheaper, and some of them are going to be faster as well. Moving on to our other champion, Nasus. 6 mana 3 3 has Fearsome, also 1 1 for each unit you slain. So, again, if we're killing our allies, if we're killing enemies, if we're striking in combat and killing things, then Nasus will be gaining stats over the course of the game. He's going to come out as like a 9 9, 10 10. 
If he strikes for 10, then he becomes bigger Nasus with Spell Shield. So a little bit more protection for him. Super nice. Enemies have minus one just passively. So it's kind of hard for the opponent to block your fearsomes now, including him. And then he strikes and kills the opponent. And that's really good because he's going to be like, you know, 12 attack by this point. Next, we have Vengeance. Six mana fast speed spell. Just kill a unit. Really strong single target removal. And rounding us out, we have to castigate kill all followers this includes your own so be mindful but yeah if we can hit undying with this that's super good uh we can make this fast speed with senna which is really funny and she won't die to this so that's why it's a bit better than ruination because our senna and our nasus will not die however neither will the enemy champion so you do have to use this at the right times as we saw in the last game, the uh, Castigate didn't really work out for the opponent. However, there are a lot of situations where Castigate will just straight up win you the game. And that's it for this deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. And for the example game, we're going to be fighting Kate Timo. So let's go ahead and keep Soul Harvest. It's good because it hits both of their champions. We'll pitch Castigate and probably our Vengeance. I'm down to keep Nasus just so we can play him right on turn 6, and then make it really annoying for the opponent to deal with. We also have Quicksand to turn off Teemo's Elusive and Caitlyn's Quick Attack. Ace Corn, sure. <laughs> A little bit of emote banter. So yeah, Ace Corn's a bit annoying. We should be able to deal with it. Go ahead and send this in. I'm sure we'll get like a Mystic Shot or something. No? Alright. No Mystic. Teemo. Sure. We're just gonna float. We can't soul harvest Teemo because we have to spend three mana. We're only on two. Open attack Andy. We will then quicksand here and here. And then block Teemo. That way we can threaten him. This should now force uh, Mystic. Oh, okay. They're not on Mystic or Peacemaker. That works for me. Let's go ahead and pass float two mana. Buffcat Peddler, that is what we're going to kill. Buffcat Peddler is kind of a menace, so we will deal with that right now. No thank you, because if we get a bunch of Flash Bombs in our deck, then when I draw, I'm going to take damage, and that's really, really cringe. Um, Ceaseless is fine. Swing with both. When attacking with Bakai Reaper, you usually want to attack with him on the right, because if any you know, strikes happen during combat where something dies, he'll gain stats and do more. That's good. Hate spike. That's really nice. Hate spike here, here. I'm sure they have to have something by now to stop this. Okay, or not. We get a husk. Is a dragon husk. I'm done. Just play the Boo Sentinel on it. Yep. Let me float too. I've got Peddler, sure. Gonna get Nasus down here. Boom. And then we can Soul Harvest the Peddler as well. Soul Harvest that. That's going to buff our Buru, Bakai, and also Nasus. Condense? Oh yeah, Condense Ava. That's a really fun combo. I love that. Double condense. Yeah, I'm just going to take like, I don't know, eight times shroom damage or something like that. That is funny. Let's go ahead and send in this, that, that. They have to block Nasus, which means our Bakai Reaper is going to do a little bit more. Five plus seven is like 12, right? So we'll do like this because Nasus can't level during this combat. So we might as well get the extra stat on the Bakai Reaper where that matters. Puts him down to two. I'm not that scared. I don't have a lot of puff caps in my deck. If I had more puff caps, I'd be scared. Uh, yeah. I'm immediately going to grasp that. I'm sorry. I am not dealing with infinite Ava achievers. So yeah, that's how you control the board right there. Lots of removal. And that about wraps it up. Again, make sure to go to the store menu and collect your decks for free. I've now covered nine different beginner decks to help you get into the game. Make sure to hop on over to my Twitch channel if you have any more questions. I'd be happy to help. And that's it for this one. Please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out. I'll be releasing more deck profiles, guides, gameplay highlights, and meta reports in the near future. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters!